Kevin. Hello, Rosie. Nice to meet nice you. Nice to meet you as well. Big fan of your work. Well, and I of yours. Well, thank, thank you. you. That's very sweet. Now we've gotten that out of the way. Yes. <laughs> Let's really talk. <laughs> now, where did you grow up, Kevin Klein? St. Louis, Missouri. St. Louis. A couple St. Louis yeah, people right. here. Maybe you can get a ride home. Well, people, people <laughs> from St. Louis tend to stay there. Yeah. Really? They don't wander this far afield. Usually uh, not. I'm one, of the, I'm one of the escapees. And uh, did you grow up in a big family? Well, there were four of us kids, two parents. Yeah. <laughs> That's pretty big. Pretty big, sure. Yeah. That's six altogether. Yeah. And did you go to Catholic school? Uh, yes, I went to a, a Catholic uh, all-boys school um, called the St. Louis Priory School. It was, and it was unique because, and we thought it was so cool, because uh, they were, these, these were Englishmen. Uh, they were British um, Benedictine monks from Ampleforth Abbey in York. And, um, and so it was sort of different than the schools my neighborhood buddies were going to because you stood up when the master came in the room sure. and you wore a tie and a jacket and there were uh, certain disciplinary procedures that, of, a, of a corporal nature if you were bad. And were you ever? I was a wise ass. You were? I was the class Class buffoon. cut up, yes. Yeah. But I always, I avoided getting hit. You knew the line, or how did you do that? I just would torment the teachers and bait them, and you know, and just anything for a laugh. And this is not something I'm proud of, but I was. I was, <laughs> I was but I, it was a thing about authority. I guess most um, adolescents go through that, and nice. I was. Uh, I was an adolescent at the time. <laughs> I think I'm over that now. But at the time, I was you know, resistant to authority. So any any of the teachers who were very dictatorial or authoritative, I, I just had to. Tease them, yeah, you know? do a little. Yeah, yeah but not, not so bad as to you know be sent to the head of discipline. To get did, did you have good whacked. grades? Average. Average? Yeah. Because you seem like a smart guy to me. That's all um, acting. It is. It's a facade. Because <laughs> I've seen you Shakespeare in the park. I've seen you. Oh. And I have to say that you're brilliant at it. I Thank really you. don't understand Shakespeare that well. I don't either. You don't? <laughs> well, until I do it. I mean, I hated it when I was in high school. I didn't get it at all. And then... Uh, then when I, I mean, I don't think Shakespeare should be read. It should be read aloud. That's Shakespeare wrote it for a group of actors to play. Right. And it's like certain poetry should not be read just on the page. So when I actually found myself in a Shakespeare play, and I looked up a few funny words, and I went, well, this is great stuff, and now I love it. Now you get it. I get it, You yeah, see, I yeah. sit there with friends but and go, what? Well, you know? You got it. But once, if you really just look at it and look up the couple of those, you go, oh, this is beautiful stuff. Now, did you enjoy that Shakespeare in the Park? Is it odd to do a play outdoors? I mean, there must be a lot of distractions. And mm. Certain nights, if it was cloudy, they would divert. You could tell, oh, OK, they're, they're divert diverting the planes for LaGuardia over the park. So you had a lot of jet planes. And then a helicopter. It seems like everyone now has a helicopter. Right. Ten years ago, when I was doing stuff in the park, not so bad. Now, helicopters. But so, so every actor's goal is to, to achieve with the audience in Central Park in the middle of this wonderful city, this, this moment of silence and, and purity. And, and so you, I was doing Richard III, and um, I remember once, um, <laughs> there was this very dramatic scene where I say, um, someone uh, to the if talks now to me of ifs, uh, off with his head uh, now by St. Paul, I swear I will not dine until I see the same. Lovell, Ratcliffe, look that it be done. The rest that love me, rise and follow me. And it was this chilling moment where you could hear a pin drop. And I thought, ah, this is working, you know. And then some guy up on the rocks yelled, well, the New York equivalent to, up yours! <laughs> As I was hobbling off, you know, and it was like, all that work, you know. For that. Just, but that's that, but then, and the audience story, yeah. loved it. They it loved it, story. right. Sure, it was fun. I did a show in Broadway, and you think Broadway audiences are going to be the cellular phones during the show. You do a scene, hey, Jim, I'm, I'm watching Grease on Broadway. It's very distracting. <laughs> You are, You're used to watching TV, and they can talk. They right, think they can exactly. talk, and, and we won't hear them. And even movies at home, if you go to the movie theater now, people just talk out like, yeah. like they're at home. And I'm one of them. Me too. <laughs> <laughs> now, your new uh, movie, Fierce Creatures, is not a sequel to A Fish Called Wanda, which you won an Oscar for, and you're brilliant in. Oh, it, but it's the same cast. <laughs> yes. Is it, it the first time they ever did that? They've taken the, that you just had so much fun, you thought, let's do it again, but change yeah, the character? Yeah, it was actually during the filming, John said, I want to do this again. I mean, it, it took eight years to finally get around to writing something. 
And originally he talked about doing a sequel because we were having such fun with those characters. And then he thought, no, no, let's, let's write new characters. Right. So he wrote it, their new characters, but there are echoes definitely of the old characters. I mean, And I read this more, rave reviews. That's what I yeah, did, yeah. really uh, wonderful reviews for you and for the entire company. We you. have a uh, clip from Fierce Creatures okay. uh, with Kevin Klein. Opens today. Take a look. Well, the zoo's going really well, Dad. Have you got the figures? You're not going to believe what I put together, Dad. Uh, probably not. I feel really close to you, Dad, uh, these last few uh, moments. And I was wondering, uh, could I get a raise? Out of the question. You got six billion dollars! Seven, but things are tight right now. OK, look, uh, what about a, a small advance on my inheritance? <laughs> what inheritance? <laughs> I'm your son. You have to leave me something. Why? <laughs> you screwed up my whole childhood. How could I have? Wasn't even there. Now, in that clip with you, a fabulous actor. Who's that acting with you? A newcomer, an Australian guy who's fabulous. Yeah. Uh, I've forgotten his name, though. His name's Kevin Klein. He's similar. You said the same name yeah, from well, Australia. Yeah, it's weird. We, we want to keep that a secret, though. Yeah. yeah. I actually, yeah, I play a, another part in the movie besides the one that looked sort of like me. <laughs> <laughs> but, it's, yeah. It's, it's, uh, I, I can't wait to see it. It's supposed to be really great. We had Jamie on last week, and I heard. she showed another funny clip, so that's Good. two in a row. All right. Uh, it's really nice to meet you. Thanks nice for doing you. this, and I'm My sorry pleasure. that something happened with the mic and you were accosted during your clip. No, that's okay. <laughs> it happens. Kevin Klein,